In today's video, we're going to be testing out how much range we can get using Waze's 100 amp hour battery pack with our Hankai outboard motor. Battery terminals, user manual, this huge 51.2 volt 100 amp hour battery. Then the Anderson connector harness that came with the Hankai motor came with some ring type terminals, which works out perfectly with the hardware that came with the battery. Let's go see if this thing comes charged straight out of the box. Showing 56.4 volts. So that is actually fully charged right out of the packaging. I know they advertise this to be a 48 volt battery. 48 volts usually comes out to a little over 53, 54 volts fully charged. So considering this is labeled as 51.2, that seems just about right for this. Actually, it shows it right here. It's supposed to hold 57.6 volts when it's fully charged. So according to the user manual, this battery has a 10 year warranty, which is pretty impressive. That's a super long time. Then again, this is made for a wide variety of different applications, such as RV, boat, solar power systems, golf carts, but we are gonna be using this for our 48 volt outboard motor that we've been testing, except what makes this different from all of the previous batteries we've been using is 100 amp hours is at least five times the battery capacity. So this should keep us out in the water for a very long time. It's got a peak discharge current of 200 amps and max discharge current of 100 amps which means this battery is able to supply over 5,000 watts of continuous power if we decide to upgrade the controller on our outboard in the near future. It's got a charge current of 20 amps. And if you wanna maximize the capacity, I would recommend getting a 58.4 volt lithium charger. I just purchased a 58.4 volt 10 amp charger from Amazon just to get this thing fully juiced up before we use it for the first time. While we let this battery fully charge, let's go work on the outboard. So I'm gonna be replacing this plastic propeller on my Hankai outboard motor since I've been a little bit concerned about this braking. Uh, a couple of the fishing spots I like to go to at my local lake have a bunch of trees right under the water. And I've actually hit a couple branches multiple times. And you'll notice that I'm starting to have the edges chip off a little bit. I'd hate to have the blade snap off while I'm a mile out from the dock and be stranded. So we're gonna be swapping this out with an aluminum one. I'm also gonna be adding some fluid to the gearbox. I actually made the mistake of running this unit dry. Luckily, I haven't ran this outboard for very long. I've maybe had it on for maybe four or five miles so far. Huh. So many people commented on my previous video that you, this unit runs dry and there's clearly fluid in there. I mean, you should always check if your lower unit is dry if you have a brand new outboard. But as you can see, the Hankai electric outboard comes with the lower unit pre-filled. The blade design appears to have a little bit more surface area and the edges are more rounded off. So I'm not sure what kind of effect that's gonna have. The 
It does feel a lot heavier duty than this plastic prop. If you're interested in checking out any of the items that we're using for today's video, I'll have everything linked in the description below. Charger showing that it's already fully charged. So let's go check out what the voltage is before we go out. 58.8 volts. So it is definitely fully charged now. Well, let's go take this thing out and see what kind of runtime we get. Having the handles on the sides makes it easy to haul around this huge battery in comparison to hauling around four separate 12 volt batteries that you have to wire into a series to make the same kind of voltage. One of the first things that I noticed hopping back on the boat with the outboard with the new aluminum prop installed is it does sound a little bit different. It sounds a little bit more pingy, which is not necessarily a bad thing. We're still maintaining a average speed of five to six miles an hour consistently. So it doesn't seem like it has any sort of negative effects. Just to give you an idea of what I mean, listen closely. So it doesn't do anything bad. It just sounds a little bit different than the original prop. Here's how I have the battery currently mounted. It's just sitting in the middle of the John boat. This is a 12 foot by 36. And I just have the battery harness running along the left side, connected to the outboard. Let's do a voltage check. We've been running it for a little over a mile and a half so far. And we are maintaining a voltage of 52.5. I often get asked why I decided to run an electric outboard rather than getting like a small four stroke or a two stroke motor since those are typically more cost effective. I wanted to go electric so I can pretty much go in reverse and put it around at low speeds. If I needed to get closer to the bank, I can just do that right away without starting up a loud two stroke motor. As you can see, I can modulate the speed and go super slow and just creep along the edge of the lake. That's not something I can do with my two-stroke outboard. This is kind of like in between my outboard and a trolling motor. One very important thing that the manufacturer wants to make sure you do not do with this battery is to run it in a series. You can run it by yourself or you can wire it up parallel with other batteries with the same specs to have higher capacity, but do not run it in a series to make higher voltage. I'm thinking this has something to do with the limitations of the factory BMS that's installed on the battery. Just taking a quick fishing break here. Might as well do a voltage check. You know, we've done a little over five miles so far and we are still holding a charge of 52.5 volts, which has barely changed at all since the last three miles. That is super impressive. So this 100 amp hour battery by Waze really does have a large capacity and it's plenty for us to stay on the water all day. So we're just gonna keep at it and keep testing, see how much runtime we get out of one charge. Taking another quick break since we've been running this motor straight for a little over six miles now. I think we've traveled over 11 miles so far today and let's check the voltage. 
it is still holding a charge of 52 volts. So we really haven't even lost too much for the last six miles. That is super impressive. Another thing that I noticed that's a little different using the Waze 100 amp hour battery in comparison to the smaller 20 amp hour batteries that we were using previously is that there's a lot less voltage sag the boat is maintaining a consistent speed of six to seven miles an hour, which is pretty much the same as what we started with. I'm really happy that we found a reliable battery and outboard combo to use for fishing on the weekends and whatnot, but we are starting to run out of time for today since I still got to work on a couple bikes this afternoon. So we're going to head back shortly. I'm thinking that we're going to end today's trip at around 17, 18 miles. So we're going to see how much charge we're going to have left. Just doing a quick voltage check after traveling over 16 miles so far. The trip meter re reset like a little over five miles ago, uh, but we are still holding a charge of 50.7 volts. So considering that this motor only has a 1200 watt power output and the Waze 100 amp hour deep cycle battery pack has a capacity of over 5000 watt hours, I can confidently say that you can be out in the water all day if you have a similar motor running at about six or seven miles an hour. If you are interested in getting more information on this battery or any of the products that we're using for today's video, I'll have everything linked in the description below. If you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor and hit that like button. And if you like this kind of content, want to keep up with some of my projects, some of my experiments, consider subscribing to this channel. But this is going to be it for today. Thank you for watching.